explicit finite element solvers are extremely used in solid mechanics to simulate highly non-linear problems like impact and crashes, among others. They have the advantage of not assembling any stiffness matrix and hence to use a lot less memory, allowing very large element counts. What is inside these programs? How do they work? In this video, I will show you an extremely simple 2D model step in which we calculate the function derivatives which are used to compute strain and stresses. Let's go with it! Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna show you how an explicit finite element code works by a simple 2D example. The classic solid 2D FEM formulation consists of a 4-node isoparametric element. This is a linear element with 4 nodes and 4 integration Gauss points. We will see later in following videos that integration used to be reduced in two dimensions to only one integration point with some hourglass correction. In a transient explicit solver, which is conditionally stable regarding on time step size, positions and velocities are obtained from the previous values. There are different explicit integration methods, but the common base is that velocity and position are calculated at different times. The MINE algorithm consists of several steps. In the first place, velocities and positions are predicted according to time integration algorithm. This is important here to remember that both nodal bars as velocities and its derivatives are interpolated from nodal shape functions with a unity value if evaluated at each node position and a zero value if evaluated at other node place. First thing to do will be to calculate the element Jacobian matrix, which is a measure of the element deformation, and together with its determinant will be used to calculate shape function derivatives. These derivatives are used to compute, in combination with nodal velocities and element connectivities, the velocity gradients at Gauss points, which contains the strain rates. The strain rates are then integrated and used to calculate element stresses, which, in our example, are obtained by the elastic modulus. And finally, together with again our shape derivatives, results in element nodal forces, which will be assembled to obtain the global nodal forces. We need to calculate our function derivatives for the current element configuration. This is known as updated Lagrangian. And it is important to distinguish that in order to be specific, derivatives should be calculated at different times for strain rates and for stresses calculations, which should be in velocities and displacement times, which differ. For the sake of simplicity, we will calculate function derivatives at the beginning of the step. Applying chain rule, global coordinate derivatives equals the product of the inverse of the Jacobian matrix and the intrinsic R and S. To calculate this product, intrinsic derivative function matrix DHDRS is built as a two row and four column arrangement, which are calculated on each integration or Gauss point. On the other hand, the Jacobian inverse, the derivative of intrinsic coordinates respect to XI global coordinates, should be calculated on each Gauss point. In this simple case, which is a square element, Jacobian and its inverse should be constant and independent of each integration point. For an element length of a 0.1, for example, Jacobian should be equal to 0.05 units. Strain rate is obtained by multiplying the transpose of a B matrix and the U vector. B matrix is built from the derivative matrix and U is an arrangement vector which contains nodal velocity of each element node. In an explicit solver, matrix multiplication is reduced only to non-zero values. In order to obtain the derivative function respect to R and S intrinsic coordinates, we differentiate each nodal function with respect to R in the first row and to S in the second. We will calculate now our function on the first integration point, which is equal to the inverse of the square of 3 according with Gauss integration rule of two points per direction. Finally, our global derivative matrix will be this multiplied by the Jacobian inverse. In the next video, we will use this function to obtain strain, stresses and finally to obtain acceleration, velocity and positions. 